welcome to aetcm the emergency medicine channel uh, today's our topic of discussion acute inflammatory condition mainly in this part we are going to see about the cold cystitis so in upcoming three or four presentation we are going to focus on the inflammatory condition some like uh, uh, pancreatitis and then appendicitis diverticulitis in this part mainly we will see the biliary tract disorder in this cold cystitis so before getting into the cold cystitis, we'll see some uh, basic anatomical or simple anatomy physiological note of uh, biliary tract. So what is mean by biliary tract? So it is a straightforward answer. Biliary tract means it is a tract for the bile. That is called the biliary tract. Tract for the bile. So bile means so it is one of the secretion we know from where bile is secreting from liver only that bile is secreting right so from liver it want to reach out your duodenal part duodenum is a area where the fat metabolism will occur from there uh, there only we need a bile content bile juice that is one of the secretory uh, things right so from liver we told from liver the bile is secreting so from the liver to your duodenum we have a one connection that is called the biliary tract not alone this uh, connection we have a one more portion that is outpouching here we have a one reservoir back that is called the gall bladder okay these all things your uh, duct that uh, we have a right and left lobe uh, right in la uh, liver we have a right and left lobe so from right lobe we have a one duct from left lobe we have a one duct that is called the right hepatic duct left hepatic duct so these both things connection and then that is connecting and then that is forming the one duct that is called a common hepatic duct okay this common hepatic duct so again one more thing we told there is a one reservoir bag we have in our biliary system that reservoir bag name is called gall bladder okay this reservoir bag is connected with your uh, common hepatic duct via the cystic duct okay cystic duct so this cystic duct plus your common hepatic duct that is forming the one more uh, connection that is called the common bile duct okay so these many things are there first from liver we have a right and left hepatic duct these both things are adjoining and then that is forming the common hepatic duct so from our gallbladder we have a one more portion that is a connection pipe that is called the cystic duct so uh, this cystic duct plus common hepatic duct that is forming the common bile duct so these whole things called as a biliary system okay so this image you can see the cystic duct hepatic duct common hepatic duct at final they are joining as a common bile duct in common bile duct where it is coming it will attach with your duodenal part duodenal part of the small intestine in that at the, uh, end of portion we have a one spincer that will regulate your uh, movement of the bile into the duodenum it will act like a valve like a uh, action valve like a action that the name is called spincer of od okay so coming then introduction to the biliary tract condition so biliary tract condition disorders have a some group of condition like cholangitis cholithiasis Cholido cholithiasis and then cold cystitis, A calculus cold cystitis. So I can draw the image and then see easily we can understand. So this is the thing and then common bell. So this is the right hepatic duct, this is the left hepatic duct. Here we have a common hepatic duct, here we have a common bile duct, here we have a cystic duct, here we have a gallbladder. Okay. If any problem or if any inflammation occurs in this common bile duct means that is called the cholangitis, cholangitis, so cholangitis, C-H-O-L-A-N-G-A-T-A-S. Any problem or inflammation in the common bile duct means that is called the cholangitis. If any stone formation, if, uh, lithiasis means stone, if any stone formation in the gallbladder means that is called the cholithiasis okay cholithiasis then if you are coming if any inflammation in the gallbladder and cystic duct means that is called the cold cystitis then coming into other part if any stone formation or if any stone present in your uh, common bile duct means that is called the cholidocolithiasis 
So, these are the various things. First one we told about the if any inflammation in the common bile duct means that is called the cholangitis. If any stone formation or stone present in the gallbladder means that is called the cholithiasis. If any inflammation in the gallbladder and cystic duct means that is called the cholecystitis. If any stone that present in your uh, common bile duct means that is called the cholidocolithiasis. Okay, these are the some various conditions that can arise in the biliary tract. So, collection of things. Before that, and then cold cystitis is our main topic of discussion today. So, cold cystitis happen because of two various reasons. First one, because of any stone formation or without any stone, it can form the inflammation. So, stone formation, we are going to see the what are the causes. Without stone formation, how it is uh, form inflammation means if any problem in the common bile duct. So, we told if any because of any stone formation in the uh, common bile duct, the presentation of stone in the common bile duct or because of any inflammation in the common bile duct that is called the cholangitis. So, that inflammation may progress into the your cystic duct and then gallbladder that can form the cold cystitis. These are the two major various reasons. First one because of any stone formation or without any stone also that inflammation cold cystitis can occur. So, coming into causes for cold cystitis just remember five major causes uh, simple mnemonic that is a fat, fat, female, fertile and then 40 to 50 age. Fair in the sense we mentioned here is a Caucasian. So, American uh, that white people are more prone compared with them dark or uh, blacky people. So, that is one of the thing. Fat and then female, fertile, 40 to 50 age. This is a common reason for the cold cystitis. So, again coming into cholithiasis. So, we told two major variants, right? Because of uh, stone, it can occur. So, what causing the stone or how the stone formation is occurring? That is the etiology for the cholithiasis. The three major reasons are three various reasons. First one, cholesterol supersaturation of bile, bile and then impaired gallbladder emptying or decreased bile salt secretion. So, the first reason is a cholesterol supersaturation of bile. So, what is mean by supersaturation? Supersaturation means there will be an excess level of solute level in the solution that is called the supersaturation means we will see that. So, what are the contents that will present in our bile juice? Majorly 95 percentage of water, okay. In our bile juice 95 percentage of water we have and then we have some electrolytes also like sodium, potassium and then or calcium. Then we have some vitamins also we have and then we have some conjugated bilirubin and then we have some bile salt, okay. These are the major content that present in our bile juice. So, apart from this water remaining all things are solute. Okay. So, solvent means that is a uh, solution which is uh, causing the solution to in a liquid format. So, here the water is a only content is a solvent remaining all things are solute. So, whenever the solute level is increasing in our body that automatically that will form the crystal or pigmentation that is called the cholesterol supersaturation that is called the supersaturation if the fat or cholesterol also one of the content. So, if the fat is excessing means that is called the cholesterol supersaturation of bile. So, the condition like dyslipidemia, excess uh, uh, fat level in our body, obesity, old age, female gender, pregnancy, rapid weight loss also one of the causes. Coming into second point that is the impaired gallbladder emptying. So, the reason pregnancy, gallbladder stasis, fasting and then total parenteral nutrition. And then again the one more question is arising here is how the TPN will cause the cholithiasis. The same important thing, TPN what are the content we have in a total parenteral nutrition, the same like sodium, potassium, calcium. So, again the solute level will increase, because of that solute level increase, mainly calcium level will increase, that because of that calcium what will happen? it will form a pigmentation or it will form a crystals ultimately it leads to the uh, cholithiasis okay and then coming into decreased bile cell secretion because of the pregnancy and then clinical manifestation wise main assessment point majorly this condition will be like a asymptomatic but uh, in some rather condition the person will complain the pain 
exactly in the right upper quadrant the pain will referred at the right uh, tip of the shoulder and then uh, others import uh, because of the inflammation the person present with the nausea vomiting and then fever and then if it is a biliary colic means typically the pain uh, along with your right upper quadrant it can present in the epigastrium region also in epigastrium we have a various reasons of pain so when the person is complaining epigastric regional pain means thoroughly we have to rule out that is because of any red flag signs like myocardial infarction that's also we have to rule out keep we have to keep in mind uh, even though gastritis peptic ulcer disease or some other esophageal varices also it can cause pain so first if the person is complaining epigastric regional pain means we have to rule out whether that is because of any life threatening condition or non life threatening that is also we have to keep in mind and then ball wall effect so this ball wall effect it is because of the intermittent pain mainly uh, this ball wall effect i think we can uh, discuss in the syncope itself so there are also the same effect so whenever the stone will obstruct your uh, pathway it will cause the pain that is called the ball wall effect okay then the classical pattern uh, pattern for the uh, patient to have a no pain until a fatty meal is eaten so the fatty food intolerance is one of the major uh, complaint so whenever the person is having fatty food the the intensity of the pain will increase and then mainly 2 to 3 or 3 uh, hours after having the food only the person will feel the severe pain why 2 to 3 hours means at that time only the flu, uh, food will leave from the gastric to the duodenal part that is why the person immediately after having food uh, they will they won't feel any pain or discomfort after having a food about 2 to 3 hours only they will complain the pain and then the variability of presentation is based on the consistency of the food that is eaten this is also one of the important thing that uh, we can tell us uh, that onset of time onset of pain is directly proportional to your food content or that uh, consistency of the food okay means or you can remember as a gastric emptying time okay gastric emptying time means that onset of pain is directly proportional to the gastric emptying time means if the food is rapidly fastly evacuating from your stomach to duodenum means that onset of pain will sudden so immediately after having uh, after having a food the person will feel a pain so if the consistency of the food is somewhat higher viscosity is higher or it will take a too much time means the gastric emptying time also will increase so the person the onset of pain will take a 2 or 3 or 4 hours likewise the onset of pain is directly proportional to your gastric emptying time and then other important things is charcoal triad that is a pain uh, three major things the person will complain first one fever second one right upper quadrant pain third one is a jaundice so this is a 50 to 70 percent cases we can see and then sign wise we can see the murphy sign so this is also easy to perform while doing an um, our physical examination we have to give a general pressure over the subcostal region subcostal means uh, below your rib and then there you have to give a gentle pressure okay so we have to ask the person to take a deep uh, inhalation so while inhalation what will happen so your diaphragm will go down so thereby your abdominal organ move forward right so in the middle of breath so when you are uh, that inflamed organ and then your pressure coming into contact mean the person will feel the discomfort and then they will stop the breathing or they will uh, tell the i have a pain in uh, in a particular time that is called the murphy sign okay and then assessment point wise again the history of nausea vomiting fever gallstone dyspepsia and then they may have a jaundice also that yellow is discoloration in a sclera part we can uh, note it down right upper quadrant or epigastric tenderness murphy sign we can note it down and then core voicier sign that is see one of the palpable gallbladder on the physical examination palpable means usually it is not uh, easily identifiable if the gallbladder is inflamed means automatically it will uh, swell so easily you can palpate in the uh, while the time of physical examination that is called the core voice here sign 
so finally management mainly in this case it is it won't be like uh, life threatening condition it won't cause any life threatening problems when it will uh, cause means if the pain intensity of the pain is increasing means automatically the because of that pain it will stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system that is the vasovagal stimulation so whenever your parasympathetic nerve gets activated automatically it will cause the bradycardia and then bronchodilation those are the things vasodilation those are the things will arise right so because of the pain so our main ultimate goal is we have to control the pain and then if the person present with the fever means that we have to control and then we told vomiting is one of the thing so we have to control the vomiting so these are the three various presentation we are going to manage in the pre hospital scenario uh, mainly we are we have to make the person comfortable okay so the symptomatic treatment only for uh, pain management we can go with an nsaid is a non steroid anti inflammatory drug injection ketralog 30 to 60 mg or if the intensity of the pain is increasing or it is falling under the moderate to severe pain means then we can straight away we can go with an opiates Uh, based on our online medical direction and then nausea also we have to treat with anti emetic and then iv fluid so whenever needed uh, because of the vomiting dehydration we can go with an iv fluid so the ideal choice of the fluid is our ringer lactate hotman solution or we can go with an cabulate or plasma like those are things also we can go for so in hospital uh, treatment wise mainly it focused on the antibiotic and then pain ma- medication uh, we will go with an ultrasound and then uh, if it is necessary means we'll go with an cold cyst ectomy ectomy means removal cold cyst ectomy that is called gallbladder removal surgery so do your best shallow